Hello everybody. Here I am again in the Gunstock shop and I am super happy to be here filming again back with the Canon Vixie uh, little camcorder. I think I'm going to have better results uh, by changing up how I've been processing the videos, but we'll find out. Um, <clears throat> the last video cut off a little short trying to use my uh, Canon uh, digital SLR which I love, but it's I don't think it's really suited for doing this kind of work. Uh, today is a Sunday. Didn't get to go to church because of COVID. <clears throat> didn't go fishing. Didn't go shooting. Didn't even work in the yard. All I did is push electrons all day because web stuff is mainly what I do. But <clears throat> here I am just with uh, 15 or 20 minutes before dinner. So girlfriend is cooking, bless her heart. <clears throat> so I thought this was my opportunity to get out here and make some more expensive wood chips and bring you along as I do that. You know, I haven't really used a uh, scissors jack before uh, to support the master. I usually use a variety of blocks and uh, wedges. Uh, but it occurred to me when I was carving last time, you know, hey, I got a pair of these underneath the uh, lathe. So... Uh, it actually seems to work. I looked on eBay to see if they have any smaller, you know, plastic or lightweight ones. You know, little ones not really intended for a car. This is kind of barely fits, and it's a great idea. Uh, I didn't find anything, but this does fit, and it is a great idea. So I think I'm just going to keep using it. And I do use a. Uh, let me pull this out. This is a uh, quill stop for a uh, milling machine. It's a half twenty thread. So I've got a piece of half twenty uh, all thread rod going through the base of the ta of the machine and then I, I turned a little uh, high density polyethylene uh, cap to go on top of the rod so it's just got like a bearing spot so this is uh, you know a way that I support the bottom of the master uh, but even though it's supported here with the skinny little American classic stock like this it still has some flex not much really not much at all I was probably tripping thinking I needed additional bracing, but why not? It's a $900 piece of wood. <laughs> I want to do everything I can to ensure perfection in my results. You know, the uh, issue with round and round machines, <clears throat> and really any uh, duplicating where you use a uh, wood master, is the master flex. It's very flexible. So if the weight of the stylus, if the weight of the machine, well that's an uncarved area there, if the weight of the machine coming down on the master is such that it causes it to flex, then the original gets overcarved. Of course you've got to be careful with the braces because if you put the braces in with too much up pressure, uh, now the original is undercarved. So it's kind of a delicate balance there. But this is why I have resisted uh, adding the ability to go round and round and round and round with this duplicating machine which maybe it might speed things up I think there's a lot of features on our complicated organic shapes that we have on our air gun stocks that uh, might not work so good with round and round anyway but mainly I get like really perfect results copying by doing it this way because I can brace the master Anyway, enough talking, eyes, ears, nose, and here we goes. I keep forgetting to ask you guys, if you would please hit the thumbs up button, 
to give it a like and if you're watching this and haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button I think I'm up to 18 whole subscribers it'd be nice at some point if I could monetize the fact that I got uh, 57 58 videos up now something like that and it's not a whole lot of work to film it's not like I matter it matters I'm not trying to make a living off of YouTube by any means but it takes a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours in a year before you start making a dollar or two so uh, it would really help the channel if you like what I'm doing if you think it's worthwhile give it a thumbs up give me a subscription you know subscribe please and I've got to try to remember to say this on all my videos alright back to work I'm starting to notice a little change in tone over there on the router. I was just looking to see if maybe something's vibrating. I think it might be getting ready for another bearing change. I've only only done one bearing change so far on the router, but it's starting to make a little noise and I better make sure I got a pair of bearings in hand. All right, really. I'm going to go back to work now.
This is looking good, it's starting to look like a gun stock. I just want to mention a couple things I was thinking about. One is as the angle gets more uh, this way, more vertical, I worry a little bit less about the underneath bracing because, uh, you know, if this were total, perfectly vertical, it would be in its strongest position. And uh, as we reach that point, there's a vector towards st stiffer, if you will, because we've got more. The wrist is really the, the flex point. The support isn't too far from the wrist, but it seems like as we rotate up, it's a little bit stiffer. I don't know. Maybe not. I, I worry a little less, though, as we get there. Another thing that I thought I'd mention, uh, nobody's commented about this, which I'm always concerned about, is sometimes my hand is over here holding the master. It's feeling if it flexes, it's just resting, right? It's just laying there. But we've got this cutter right over there, and that looks maybe like it's scary. But the machine can't get to my hand at the, at the furthest reach of its motion. It, it can't get there. It's got a limit to its motion. You know, the, the cutter could, uh, could never make it all the way to the master, right? This, this is as far as it can go right there. So uh, I'm, I'm not in any danger. I do some things that probably are, could be considered a little risky but I try to move the cutter out of the way. If I want to check and see if the uh, blank is stiff down here at this end, I'll roll the carriage off to the right, or sometimes I might reach underneath it like this. And same thing if I'm going to reach over here. I, I have a hold of the carriage, and, I, and you can't even see it's out of the picture, but I have a hold of the carriage, and I hold it out of here and you know while I check and make sure things are stiff. And I do frequent checks to make sure that nothing is vibrated loose. Uh, not that it often does, but you know, sometimes it does, and I'd rather catch it uh, early than before it becomes an issue. Alright, I'm going to work around the uh, pistol grip some, and isn't this just so cool, watching a 3D shape appear out of a chunk of wood? I just am fascinated by it. You know, I love doing this work because of the beautiful wood and just the magic of the carving. You know, when I'm carving, my attention is on the stylus on the master and I'm trying to make some kind of you know fairly good repeating passes though uh, can you see that are um, you know incremental but I'm not looking over here very much uh, my focus is here now sometimes like you saw me I just took down this little bit of extra wood that was there I was watching that while I did it but most of the carving, you know, I'm watching the stylus on the master. And then it's just really cool for me to look up and look at the blank and see that, oh my goodness, there's a gun stark appearing out of that. All right, I'm going to work on the pistol grip a little bit. <clears throat> I still, uh, you know, we still have quite a bit of uh, extra wood that I'm leaving. And I don't think you can make it out in the video, even if I'm better at processing it. Here, let me zoom this in here. Uh, I'm trying. Oh boy, let me loosen this up a little bit, and zoom, yep, this camera does have a cool feature, so you can see as I move this around, the stylus is on my uh, level board there, uh, this aluminum plate, but the router bit has a gap, so I'm leaving extra wood, and that's because while I'm doing all this major hogging out, which puts a lot of stress on everything, things could be flexing, moving, you know, in the heat of battle I might uh, pound the stylus down on the master and cause it to flex and overcut the wood a little bit. So by having uh, some extra wood left behind during all this rough cutting, uh, I have a safety safety net. And then once, once I'm done with this level, I'm going to go back around and recut everything down to the final level. And it, it takes a lot of time and maybe it's not necessary, but as I keep repeating, this is an irreplaceable piece of wood. It, it's worth spending an extra few hours to make sure it's right. I wish the industry could pay me for that attention, but it really needs to be done. I, I can't skimp. Uh, I must achieve perfect results. Okay, back to work.
Whenever I've got the bit buried for a little while, really hogging out material, I've got my little finger underneath the stylus to give it even more of a gap while I'm really majorly hogging out wood. And then after doing that, I go back and double check that the uh, bit hasn't uh, walked out of the collet. You know, walk is probably not the right term, like spiraled out. Now, I have not experienced it ever happening with this, uh, I think it's called Muscle Chuck Monster. I think it's called Muscle Chuck, which I've talked about in my other videos. Fantastic pro product that goes in place of the traditional uh, router collet. Now, I have had router bits walk out of a regular collet, but I've never had it happen out of the Monster Chuck. Uh, it's a great product, but still, I've been doing this a long time and uh, years of potential failure get to, uh, you know, once shot, twice shy kind of thing. So every time when I'm through uh, really hogging out some wood and I'm going to go and do some fine cutting, you'll see me go back over here to my datum and uh, tilt this up, go back over here to the datum and make sure that I still have a, a gap there. All right, I'm back to it. Are we doing on time? 14 minutes. Uh, no, no, no. Where I'm at 19 minutes, getting close to the limit here, what I like to do. So I'll just uh, work this up a little bit and then we'll call it quits. Uh, not that this is my limit of my stamina, but uh, I think YouTube likes 20 minutes ideally, I guess 30 minutes kind of tops. I don't know how long your guys' patience is if you actually watch, you know, 20 or 30 minutes of me carving. I do. Maybe I'm a little sick. But I like to watch other uh, machinery videos, you know, machine shop videos. I can sit there and watch a piece of metal being cut for a half hour. It's the silliest thing. I know there's got to be other guys out there like me. I've got some uh, machine shop videos of my own that I've filmed, me turning material on the lathe. Sometimes I put those on. I just let it run. I just, you know, I love it when I'm turning the material. I love watching it happen. And I can't do that all the time, so <laughs> I like watching the videos I shot of me turning material. All right, here we go. I don't know. My head, my head works different, I guess, than a lot of people's.
good session. Girlfriend startled me coming into the shop here uh, saying dinner's ready. So that's what I gotta go do next. You can see it looks a little bit fat because we got that extra space there on the router bit. And that's okay. But it's looking pretty nice. You know, I want to put some alcohol on it, just see if we can start seeing the figure. I mean, it's so rough, like it's super rough carved, but let's just see. Just see, oh my God, can you see that? Oh, wow. I better be careful using the big guy's name, but are you seeing that? Is that crazy? Wow. Let me loosen the clutch. Take the connecting rod off. Turn this around. Is that just going to be the most amazing gun stock? Nobody's ever seen an HW95. It's going to look like this. I don't want to get in the way here. Yeah, I hope. I hope after processing this video that comes out how gorgeous that is. Alright, that's it for this session. Uh, don't forget, thumbs up button please. That does a like. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't hit it again, that'll unsubscribe you if you already did it once. Um, that uh, will, you know, hopefully help the Google algorithm uh, start recommending me at some point. I don't know if what I'm doing is going to be interesting to all that many people, but it would be nice to find out. There's a lot of things I need to improve what I'm doing over here. I need a, uh, a vacuum system. That would be great. Okay, everybody. Michael out.